So in this sense, land and forest and natural resources are, are quite challenging, are facing quite challenging status. Uh, access to and control over land and natural resources by the local people uh, has to be reflected and ensured in the, uh, in the policies and laws of the country. But uh, in recent two new land laws, uh, it is not very much so uh, uh, indicative that uh, peop local people can have access and control over land and natural resources. But uh, there are quite positive uh, indication that the government has been initiating positively for the local people so that they can have benefit out of the uh, international development investment and also development aids. And um, from the people's side also, they have been challenging to learn how to engage with the government sector and also how to bargain and how to engage with international development actors as well. Uh, usually they have been uh, living, uh, you know, away from the policies arena, but at, uh, right now they have been uh, de uh, being demanded uh, to engage, to participate more in policy arena, and, and that is so dynamic for our people and having less known what to do with this policy and what to do with the budget. If you look at the budget discussion in our country, uh, people are lessly engaged and lessly aware of uh, what budget means to them. Yeah, so this is general challenges that we have been facing for both government and people's side. Uh, from the civil society perspective, we have been helping both uh, people and also government uh, as much as we can. If that is the continuation of that, uh, uh, the challenge that the country has to manage in terms of natural resources. Uh, the government has uh, uh, already formulated uh, forest law in 1992, which is less, uh, how should I say, not, uh, which is less uh, accommodated the current changes. Uh, for example, the community forestry mechanism that they have applied uh, as an idea and as a, to a certain extent as a practice for 30 years, but which is not yet acknowledged in any of the forest law. That has to be reflected in the law, then the community forestry, how benefits to the community and how it can be sustainable for the people of Myanmar, it has to be reflected, it has to be publicly and explicitly uh, uh, discussed and it has to be reflected in the law. So in terms of forest ownership, uh, like uh, mentioned in, in the, in the uh, discussion, uh, at the moment the government has been managing all, but uh, we regard uh, forest as a common property and we own also forest and because we use forest and then we understand that we have to protect forest. Well, that green growth idea uh, from a uh, uh, private sector should be more proactively engaging with us, not only with civil society setup, but also with the government and also people of Myanmar to ensure, for example, international standard like free prior informed consent kind of, of, of mechanism and if they could adopt in their development projects. And like uh, the, the company presented in the forum, zero deforestation idea, deforestation idea. And in Myanmar, what we at the moment immediately need is reforestation. And if a kind of private sector can engage with us uh, immediately with the reforestation and then adopting the idea of green growth and defore zero deforestation idea, that would be very much grateful to us and international investors who are coming to us, who are knocking to our doors or to come into our country and work uh, for our uh, community, they should very seriously consider in this situation to be more green growth and to be more sustainable development for the people as well as for their profit. Along with the poverty reduction strategy that the president of Myanmar has already declared to the public, uh, the, uh, you know, being the Minister of Environmental Conservation and Forestry here, attending the conference, uh, giving some of the remarks to the uh, attendants, indicates me he, uh, the government is more collaborating not only with nat uh, national actors, but also international and regional actors, including civil society and uh, private sector. That inspires me a lot. Uh, 
that leads me to want more to engage more not only the government sector but also private sector as well in creating development uh, comprehensive development plan for the country which should envisage uh, people priorities which should reflect people priorities and needs in the plan and accordingly the policy should be formulated and uh, people and also you know it's win-win win-win strategy should be adopted by the government the international uh, investor and development actor will gain and also uh, Myanmar community will also be gaining